friends, we have made it. After two months, we have finally reached the last day of Z Memories. I hope you had fun watching me look back on the visual novels that have shaped my VN history. To the surprise of probably none of you, I couldn't talk about my VN history without talking about my favorite visual novel series of all time. Actually, scratch that, it might straight up be my favorite video game series of all time, Rants. An almost three decade long epic following the many escapades of the brutal adventurer known as Rants. And when I say three decades long, I don't mean that about 29 years pass in the storyline. I literally mean that this series known as Rants has been going on for the last 29 years. Starting from 1989 with Rants 1 and ending finally in 2018 with Rants X Cassette. I call it my favorite video game series because I'm not just comparing it to other visual novel games. I mean, I consider it my favorite, even amongst JRPG series in general like Persona, Final Fantasy, Metal Gear Solid, okay, well, it's not really a JRPG, but you get my point. I get this is a pretty insane statement to make. If most people unfamiliar with the Rant series were to describe Rants as short as possible, chances are they would say something like, Rants is an overly long Edo gay series about an egotistical adventurer who goes around boning women without their consent. And yes, while that is technically correct, it does kind of do a disservice to everything else that is phenomenal about the series. It would be as if you describe Persona 3 as a game where kids shoot themselves to summon demons. Like, sure, yeah, but there's a lot more to it. From the overly extensive world building, better than nearly every other JRPG I've ever played, the shockingly deep and fun gameplay that varies between each entry in the series, to the hilarious characters and their interactions with each other that keep you coming back for more. Rants is my favorite series through and through. Now, is this a biased statement that is solely my opinion? Of course it is! I've been following the series for a long time, that said, I think a lot of the later entries are fully fleshed out games capable of standing on their own in current times, from a character, story, and gameplay perspective. Anywho, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the details of just why I think this is such a dang good series. Rance is a fantasy RPG Edogay series following the tales of the eponymous hero Rance. At its most basic, the Rance series can be summed up as a parody of the classical JRPG. Rather than having a hero like in Dragon Quest, who is motivated to do good simply on the virtue of being a good person, Rance acts purely out of self-interest. His main goal in the entire franchise is to make all the beauties of the world his. While most heroes are normally a humble lot, Rance is prideful to a fault, believing that every woman in the world is rightfully his, and every man in the world aside from him is trash. A lot of the humor early in the franchise comes from Rance acting out against what we would normally expect from a classic good hero. Like when asked for an honorable duel, Rance sacrifices some random guy as a meat shield, or when faced with the resurrected Demon King, his first reaction is to try to bone her instead of seal her away for good. While all of that is hilarious, if one gag was all there was to Rance throughout the entire series, I definitely wouldn't have followed his 29 year journey. Underneath its overly comedic nature lies one of the best deconstructions of the JRPG genre I've ever played. One of the most amazing parts of the Rant series is how unlike most series like Final Fantasy or Persona, the entirety of Rants is one linear story, with each entry taking place chronologically right after the previous one ends. Every single game is about Rance's adventure in a part of the continent, starting from Rance 1, with his first adventure in the country of Liazis at the age of 18, all the way to the final game in Rance 10, where he's uniting all of humanity against the Majin at the age of 24. As you can probably tell by what I just said, the main series of Rants is 10 games long. There are three non-canon games, 4.1, 4.2, and Kichikuo Rants. However, for the sake of simplicity, I will refrain from talking much about them this time around. I will, however, mention that basically everything from Rants 5D to 10 was adapted from material present in Kichikuo Rants. What is cool about the entirety of the Rants series being one continuous story is how characters from earlier games in the series come back constantly throughout it. And I don't just mean as a one-off cameo, but rather as important playable characters who have their own roles and character development in the newer games. 
Princess Leia and Konami from Rance 1 have been major players time and time again throughout even the newest game in the series, and this cast only gets bigger and bigger with each new entry. Unlike games like Eiyu Senki or Koihime, Rance doesn't start with a huge cast, but rather one that grows. So, by the end of Rance 10, you have a ridiculously huge cast that you are already intimately familiar with. Another advantage of having this one continuous story along multiple games is that it really allows Rance to flesh out the world of the continent in an organic way, and legitimately, the world of the Rance series is one of the most interesting I've ever had the pleasure of playing. From how heroes work, how levels themselves work in the series, the Majin system, all the different gods, the various contents and factions, all of it is actually quite nuanced and surprisingly dark. Definitely much deeper and more thought out than I expected coming into the franchise for the first time. Because Rance is an 18 plus game, aside from the fact that yes, it has H scenes in it, it also means that Rance is able to show actions that most JRPGs wouldn't dare to show. Sure, they are presented in a humorous fashion due to Rance being such a straightforward, no-nonsense kind of guy, but he still definitely happened and hit pretty damn hard at times. I think the only JRPG series I feel that has this feeling of each entry in the series contributing to a much bigger world that encompasses it is another favorite of mine, the Legend of Heroes series. The Legend of Heroes is a long-running set of different trilogies, each following different characters based in different locations, but in the same general time frame. The beauty of the series is in how one group's action in one trilogy affects another, or how characters from other trilogies grow up and act as key figures in newer entries in the franchise. These are all big factors into really making The Legend of Heroes feel like one connected world. Most RPG series don't do this for many reasons. In many RPG series like say Fire Emblem, The Tales series, or even Acelia the Eternal, Sure, the sequels usually take place in the same universe, like perhaps 400 years later or in a different land entirely, but for all intents and purposes, it's basically a completely new setting. Sequel writers usually hit that big reset button to ensure that every character from the original game is long gone, because by the end of an RPG, the main characters kind of reach god status, with the last boss being some threat that seeks to end the world. So after an ordeal like that, usually there isn't anything left that can challenge the MC. Legend of Heroes sidesteps this problem by constantly showing characters who are above and beyond the main characters even by the end of their journey. And Rance has both the level system, as well as clear established threats that are way and above and beyond Rance's physical capabilities. While Rance does succeed against world-ending threats time and time again, he always does so by a combination of having a good plan, working with his many comrades, and most importantly, being insanely lucky. I have never felt by the end of any game in the series that Rance was some untouchable force. I unfortunately really can't talk too much about the extensive world building Rance has in fear of spoilers, I will, however, explain the level system, which I think is a good representation of the interesting setting. So, in the Rance world, everyone in the world has level caps and skill levels set from birth. Levels determine the basic strength of an individual, which can be raised by accumulating experience. However, people require permission from a level god to increase their levels, which the level gods are happy to do because it increases their overall status among the other level gods. Levels, however, are not permanent and decrease from inactivity, with people who increase their levels really fast losing them just as fast if they don't maintain their training. So while Rance does gain levels exceedingly quickly in every game, jumping almost 40 or so levels during an adventure, he loses them just as fast after usually taking a few month break between games. While everyone born on the continent has levels that they can raise, they also have level caps placed onto them in order to limit their power and maintain balance in the world, with only the Demon King, Sub-Yokai, and Rance being anomalies with no level cap, meaning that everyone has a maximum potential they can reach from birth. Skill levels are also quite fascinating, ranging from level 1 to 3 in any particular trait, such as sword combat, adventuring, magic using, business management, and so on. Skill level 1 allows anyone to become a master of that trait. Skill level 2 reaches genius levels, where these holders usually possess their own special skills, and skill level 3 reaches god status. For the skill of how different each level is, three of the strongest swordsmen in the world, Uesugi Kenshin, Rick Addison, and Rance, are all only at level 2 sword combat, 
while even skilled swordsmen like Hubert Lipton are stuck at 1. While levels and skill levels aren't the sole determining factor in one person being another, it is an almost absolute measure of that person's strength, and how strong they will ever get in their lifetime. So if you want to be an adventurer but had no skill levels and a level cap of 10, well tough luck, you are doomed to be a nobody. I find all this background explanation for many concepts usually taken for granted in most JRPGs to be really fascinating, where everything is in place not because JRPGs have to have a level system for the player, but rather it is inbuilt into the story as part of the system that holds the world together. And this level system just scratches the surface of how deep the Rant series lore truly goes. Alright, so switching gears for a sec. Many times throughout Z Memories, I've mentioned how I think the 18 plus elements in visual novels are usually kind of pointless. Not always, but usually. A majority of the time, the 18 plus elements feel like they were added purely for the sake of having them in the visual novel to classify it as an eroge. Not bashing you if you enjoy them, sometimes I do too, but it's just how I feel about them. I have felt that this was the case for Day 1 Tsukihime, Day 6 is Eya no Acelia, Day 8's Little Buster's Ecstasy, Day 10 Shari no Kuni, and even Day 9's Majikoi, which while I said the 18 plus things were alright, if you took them out of the story, it would still pretty much be the same experience. Rants, however, is a series where its identity as an Eroge is pretty much a core part of the story. If you tried to remove all the 18 plus elements in Rants, it would be near impossible to piece together the same story. Not saying all H scenes have to be crucial to the plot, but I personally can greatly appreciate it when they are a story element rather than just an add-on that the visual novel ham-fists into the plot. What I enjoy most of all, however, is not just that, Rants makes all these 18 plus scenes a vital part of the story, but also that they're just really funny to read. All the fun faces and Rants having all these assorted lines beyond what you'd normally expect, like calling his partner down there his hyper weapon, good times. Anyways, getting back to why I enjoy this series so much, another reason is that the Rants series has one unique feature that I have never ever seen in such a long running franchise where every new entry comes with completely different gameplay from the previous one. And when I say completely different gameplay, I don't mean the sequel has one new mechanic. I mean that Rant 6 is a dungeon crawling RPG, Sengoku Rants or Rant 7 is a strategy game, Rants 9 is tactics like Fire Emblem, and Rants 10 is a strategy RPG, crazy complicated, multi-route splitting gacha masterpiece. They are all exceedingly different, and Alice Soft does an amazing job with the gameplay every time. I have always looked forward to how every new entry was going to mix it up, and how Alice Soft was going to bring Rants to a new format. In terms of sheer gameplay, Sengoku Rants, Kichikuo Rants, and Rants 10 are my favorite in the entire series, easily. I think they have the most interesting gameplay by far, and the most replayability value with how each game has so many branching paths and different unlockables to keep you coming back for more. Rance 10 is so grand in scale that you could play it 6 times and every time you would discover new paths and new storylines. You can't even unlock part 2 of Rance 10 without running through the game multiple times, unlocking the different endings, and filling out all the hidden objectives. With that said, I think Rance 6 to 10 are all amazing games. The original Rants 1 to 5, however, they are, well, pretty dated by this point. Rants 1 came out in 1989, and it really, really shows. It's an absolutely broken RPG, which barely makes any sense. Rants 3 to 4 are much better story wise, but their gameplay still leaves much to be desired. The remakes do a much better job, but I will focus on the originals for now. Speaking of mediocre gameplay, there are plenty of visual novels that have tried their hand at having some in their game, however I tend to find that while they usually have good ideas, in execution, it ain't so great. This isn't the case with Rants at all, where the gameplay is actually deep, fun, and most importantly, challenging. If you don't put in the effort to learn the system, each new game in this series is gonna crush you. Granted, not really the case for the older ones, as in pre rant 6, but definitely for every single one after that. Music and presentation are also A-plus across the board. 
Shade is a blast to listen to as always, and both DJ C++ and Minatsu Eru manage to bring their own amazing soundtracks once Shade leaves during the last two entries of the franchise. Personally, I think I'm really bad at trying to describe how good I think a song is, so I won't let the songs you've been hearing in the background speak for themselves. Here's a tiny tidbit of one of my favorite BGMs. Pretty good, yeah? The presentation in the Rant series is also great. You can definitely still tell that it's a doujin game in some places, but dang does it really work with what it's got. Finally, we can talk about the glue that holds all these different aspects together. Even with extensive world building, damn good gameplay, great music, great presentation, it would all be nothing without the best part of any visual novel, the amazing stories and character interactions to back it up. And luckily, Rance has some of the best I've ever read. Now, before I start gushing, keep in mind, I'm biased, and I also enjoy comedy and absurdity quite a bit. With Rance being a parody of the JRPG genre, it means that we're gonna have that in spades. With that disclaimer out of the way, I had an absolute blast. I have never laughed quite so hard than when I played the Rance series. This might resonate with some of you, but for someone who's grown up on a ton of video game, media, anime, manga, books in general, you eventually reach a point where you stop getting surprised by story developments, mostly because you've seen it happen in other stories already. Well, that wasn't the case for me with Rant, where even when I was so acclimated to his antics, I was still pleasantly surprised by what Rant decides to do and how he reacts to each conflict. I have a ton of favorite moments, but I'll save that for the end, just like in previous Z memories with a scale befitting the franchise, so wait till then to hear more. Moving on to the characters, we of course have to start with the main man himself, Rance. As I first stated in the beginning, Rance is an egotistical adventurer with one defining go in his entire life. And that is to bone all the beautiful women in the world no matter what the danger he faces down or the crazy situations he is in. Whether it be spearheading the revolution of an entire country, or joining a group of resistance fighters in a classist society, Rance is willing to make the journey to bone the prettiest ladies out there. While Rance may be exceedingly boastful, he is a man who walks the talk, and backs up his crazy antics and schemes with his own capabilities. He may not be the smartest character in the series, or even the strongest, but Rance is the luckiest and most confident one. Not to say he's weak by any means, but all the toughest opponents Rance takes down is through his ingenuity rather than just his strength. His thinking outside the box constantly surprises not only the other characters of the story, but also the players themselves. His unwavering belief that even demon kings are beneath him, in a world where the Majin are pretty much considered higher beings, untouchable by humanity, makes him an anomaly, and the only person that not even the gods can predict. Just to reiterate how the Demon King is viewed in the Rance world, in the continent, the land where the entirety of Rance takes place, the Demon Kings are so revered in fact, that the entire era is named after whoever is the current Demon King, with nearly all of the entire main series taking place during the LP or Little Princess era, named after Mickey. This makes Rance's blatant disregard for them all the more insane. Rance also shows a surprising amount of care towards those he considers his woman. While his goals are all oriented towards getting with more ladies, he does not tolerate other people's wanton slaughters. Mostly because he believes that it's not right for all these wonderful women to pass away without having a chance to be with him, but you know. While his enemies do bait him with honey traps all the time, Rance is usually smart enough to turn it around on them, as while he enjoys women, he's only one to do it on his own terms and no one else's. Shockingly enough, Rance does grow as a character throughout the series. While his core personality never changes, he definitely becomes much more capable and even dare I say, caring by the end of the series. While he starts out in Rance 1 as a simple adventurer, throughout his many journeys, Rance gains plenty of experience acting as a leader of sorts as he spearheads all of the major battles at the forefront. As the people who follow his lead continue to see him persevere through nigh almost impossible odds, they begin to trust him to the point wherein by the last game, 
Grants is given the position of Supreme Commander of the Human Race's survival against the Majin in an all-out war. Throughout the series, you also see Rance build up friendships with many different people, and regardless of whether he acknowledges them or not, these experiences definitely affect him. Whether it be because he finds more people to care about, or because he finds comrades that he can trust his back to. Although I will mention that this is made a lot more apparent after the Kichikuo Rance retcon, because pre-Kichikuo Rance, before the series got revived and given a whole new art direction, Rance does some pretty heinous things in the earlier games. In Kichikuo Rance, some of Rance's actions can only be considered straight evo, and not even with any comedic overtones either. Kichikuo Rance in general is a pretty dark game. After Alisoft realized that Kichikuo Rance wasn't going to be their last game, they made it non-canon and took all the different stories in that game and adapted them from Rance 5D all the way to Rance X. In the process, Alisoft definitely tried to make Rance more of an anti-hero, rather than just some horrible person who happens to save the day, sometimes. This is pretty obvious if you've played the original Rance 1, 2, 3, then you try playing the remakes, where you can see that Rance retroactively is an overall much nicer person, generally speaking compared to how he is in the original. Now, in Day 9 during Majikoi, I said that series had one of the best side casts in any visual novel. And the reason why I said one of them at that time is because Rance has my favorite side cast. While Rance is a great character on his own, the series is only so good because everyone compliments Rance's personality so well. The biggest charm of the Rance series is how there are so many characters who all have their own personalities and goes, and how they all react to Rance's actions. I have never laughed quite so hard just watching characters interact with other characters. The dialogue is just so full of personality and so much fun to read. In Day 3 of Phoenix Wright, I said that one of the best parts of that series was how you can see Phoenix Wright and the cast grow through each entry, which was rare since most visual novels never got direct sequels. Now imagine that idea, except it's with a huge cast this time that constantly grows with every entry, and how so many of them come back time and time again over the course of 10 whole games. There is an absolutely truckload of amazing characters, all of whom were a blast to meet and battle and even work together with. It's not even just the women who become important to Rance. There are also a ton of side characters and even a lot of guys who go through their own character arcs, conflicts, and resolutions throughout each adventure alongside Rance. There are a ton of favorite characters I have, and while I could definitely talk at length about any of them, that would make this video 5 hours long, so let's just go with 5 favorites, excluding Rance of course. First off, we got Kento Kanami, the unfortunate ninja of Liazis who makes the most appearances in this series outside of Rance and Syl. She stuck with Rance due to the whims of her master, Princess Leah, who is hopelessly enamored with him. She hates his guts throughout most of the series for teasing her relentlessly, which makes seeing her in Rance 9, where she actually falls in love with Rance and acts all lovey-dovey, such a huge change. Surprisingly enough, it was really cute watching them interact, and that was the reason why I put her up this high. Next up is Rick Addison. Rick is the infamous leader of the Liazis 3rd Division, the Red Corps. Famed as the Red Reaper of Liazis, he is the strongest man on the continent, and also one of the very few male friends that Rance has. Both form a powerful friendship with each other. Rance because Rick doesn't try to seduce any of his women, and he can trust Rick's loyalty and strength. Rick because he holds Rance's capabilities in the sword, decision making, and leadership in exceedingly high regard. Their friendship is unique, and it's nice to see someone who is able to understand Rance's strong points so clearly. Even his inability to see Rance's overall faults is pretty funny. Up next, we got Uesugi Kenshin, the war goddess of Japan in all caps. Kenshin is here simply because I found a dynamic between her and Rance really cute. The scene where Kenshin first meets Rance is still one of my favorites in the entire series. She is one of the very few women to openly love Rance from the get-go, and it is adorable how this straightforward love completely throws Rance off his game. Seeing him panic and run away from Kenshin during Sengoku Rance was definitely one of the major factors that made me like Rance all those years ago. It also helps that I like her look, outside of her dumb hat. Right after Kenshin, we got Urza Pranais. The reason why I like Urza so much is because she is someone who can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rance. 
While the first time you meet her, she's essentially a puppet figurehead for the Resistance and Zeth, by the end of the sixth game, she really grows into her own as a leader. Urza's dealings with Rance later on in the series is very fun to watch. How she wards off his advances, and how she knows his personality and his thoughts so well that she can handle him. At the same time, you can see that she does love and respect Rance to some degree, but she is warding him off because she knows there's work to be done, rather than because she is shy about it or anything. I was really happy to see that she played such a major role throughout Rance 10 as one of the main advisors. The last character I want to talk about is Paton Miss Naruji. If you had to pick a single character who goes through the most development and changes throughout the Rance series, that character would be Paton, hands down. As the Prince of the Hellman Empire, he starts out in Rance 3 as merely a third-rate villain, a depraved idiot abusing his power who is manipulated by the Majin to do their bidding, and is quickly swept away by Rance. After his failures, he is exiled from his country, upon which he embarks on his own hero's journey, training to become a better man, seeing the world from the common folk. He comes to terms with his own weaknesses, and decides to fight for the people. Paton's return in Rand 6 is him as a changed man, his new, muscular body a physical representation of his new tempered spirit. He becomes this big bro kind of character, a man with a big body, but an even bigger heart. His story is actually incredibly gripping, and as the other main character of Rance 9, he provides an excellent counterpart to Rance as a hero. Paton is also one of the very few people who sees Rance for what he is in all aspects, both his greatest strengths and his biggest weaknesses, but still truly respects him and they form a strong friendship. Paton is a man who starts out as a one-note villain, but becomes by the end, easily one of the greatest heroes in the series. Okay, and with that, I think that about covers as succinctly as possible what I love about the Rance series. I think I've made it abundantly clear that I love Rance, and if this glimpse into why I love it so much has perhaps made you interested in checking it out yourself, please, by all means, go for it. Rance 6 and Sengoku Rance have both been officially translated by Manga Gamer. I get why people are hesitant to check Rance out. The initial premise doesn't exactly have the most widespread appeal, but I think once you get into the series itself, you'll realize it's just dang good fun all around, from the gameplay to the story. It is my favorite visual novel and RPG series of all time, and if you come in with an open mind, maybe you'll find Rance's 29 year long journey up your alley as well. Normally I would jump into my favorite moments without pause, but since this is the final Z memory, I thought I'd put a small part of my closing thoughts right here, as I feel that the vast majority of everyone watching this has not played all of the Rant series, so consequently, we'll probably not see past the favorite moments section. It has been a long four months for me working on these videos. If you have been keeping up with Z memories, you know that I've been releasing 12 videos for the past two months. What you don't know is that I've actually spent two months earlier than that writing out the scripts, sketching out the bag Zirin character you see in front of you, and having the first six Z memories already completed. I mentioned this during the announcement video, but the goal of Z Memories has always been to be a look into the visual novels that make up my personal VN reading history, and just share my experiences with them. They might not all have been the best visual novels, but when I look back, these were the ones that stuck out to me the most. You also probably noticed that a good half of them were actually visual novels with gameplay, and that's because what I love most isn't just visual novels. I just really like niche Japanese video games with interesting stories, characters, and yes, even gameplay. It just so happens to be that some of the most amazing stories I've read have been from visual novels, from these doujin products that aren't limited or affected by age restrictions, rating boards, or public perception. Where are these doujin groups like Alisoft, Giga, Nitro Plus, Eternal, Usually? Sure, they don't have the budget or staff of a AAA studio, but what they do have is the capabilities to work within their limitations, and the freedom to express whatever the ideas they want. That is also why I like Rance so much, where I feel it's the epitome of what I'm looking for, where you have the depth in the story and characters of a visual novel, combined with amazing gameplay with real thought put into it. The best of both worlds, if you will. Anyways, I suppose I'm kind of going on a tangent. I'll talk a lot more in detail about the stuff I mentioned here, what Z Memories was all about, 
some more extensive closing thoughts, and a future of what's next for this channel in an update video coming up real soon. Let me just say though, if you've enjoyed everything up until now on this channel, you'll definitely continue to enjoy the new stuff I'm gonna tackle. It's all gonna be more Japanese sort of games, sometimes they're gonna be visual novels, sometimes they're gonna be visual novel game hybrids, sometimes they're gonna be RPG Maker games, and sometimes they might just be games or media with fun topics to talk about and great stories to share. Regardless, it's gonna be hella interesting and unique, and I hope you join me for the ride. For now though, thank you for watching Z Memories. I had fun making these, and I hope you had fun watching it. Maybe you discovered a new visual novel to check out, or maybe you just enjoyed listening to one guy talk about your favorite ones. I'll have a playlist linked at the end to the entire Z Memories in case you missed any and want to check them out. If you want to talk about rants, comment section, I'll be there. Finally, as you've heard me say many, many times, like button is there as always, subscribe if you want to continue seeing all sorts of unique Japanese games, hit the notification bell and the all button if you want to receive notifications all when my next video comes out, and my Twitter is there in case you want to see, you know, where I vanish to in between videos. Alrighty, even though all that made it sound like this last Z Memories is over, we still have the favorite moments to talk about, and for this final one, I'm gonna go all out. I'll be listing one favorite moment from each game in the series, from Rants 1 all the way to Rants 10. While I will still talk a tiny bit about the ending for some of them, I will try to keep it short and sweet, so there won't be any huge spoilers that ruin anything. If there is a big one I think is important, I'll warn you beforehand. That said, Spoiler warning as always. Rants 1, the quest for Hikari. So although I played the original 1989 Rants 1 before I did the remake, I'll be using the remake footage because honestly, the original Rants 1 is not a good game and they basically cover the same story beats, but the remake looks way better. The moment I remember the most is probably, well, exactly the ending sequence where after all that has transpired, Princess Leah has become completely enamored with Rance, and rushes straight to his doorstep to get married, which probably says more about how insane Princess Leah is than anything else. It's a good laugh, a great deviation from the classic trope of the hero getting married to the princess, and a fantastic show of how much Rance values his freedom. Rance 2, The Rebellious Maidens. Using the remake again, this time because I actually skipped out on playing the original, so my only experience with 2 is with the remake that came with the Alisoft 2008 fan disc. This time around, my favorite moment would have to be with Syl and Birdie. When Syl gets separated from Rance, this is where you really get to see the fact that Syl, regardless of whether she is Rance's slave or not, is sticking by him because she wants to be with him rather than being coerced to or forced to. Even when given the option to get with the good looking Birdie, she still tries to seek out Rance to the best of her abilities. Rance 3 The Fall of Liazis Using the good old original this time, the third game is when the Rance series finally hits its stride and actually has an amazing plot. My favorite moment from Rance 3 easily comes to my mind as one of my favorites in the entire series. This one takes place close to the end, where Majin Nose is blocking the bridge leading to the final boss. It's a one-way chasm with spikes all around the edges. Everyone looks to Rance for a brilliant plan, like the so many others he's had throughout this entire war. And Rance decides to throw everybody in his party one by one down the bridge as meat shields. This goes brilliantly until he finally reaches Majin Nose and realizes that everyone in his party is down. He later gets bailed out by Rick, Layla, and practically every main ally in the entire game. But it just goes to show that Rance doesn't always have the best of ideas. At the same time, it's definitely a solution that's incredibly like him, how he believed that, screw it, as long as he was still the only one up, he could totally take on that guy. Rance 4, The Legacy of the Sect, is a great follow-up to Rance 3. My favorite moment of this would just have to be the formation of the Rance rescue team, how all these characters from Rance 1, 2, and 3 make a return to help rescue Rance from the floating island. It really solidifies the fact that these characters we've been meeting for the past three games aren't merely one-offs, but core characters that will show up for future installments. Rance 5D, The Lonely Girl. Alright, so, honestly, if I had to pick the weakest game in the franchise, well, it would be the original Rance 1, followed by Rance 5D. 
This was much more of a mini adventure after the grand epic that was Kichikuo Rants, so there isn't much to this game. Alice Soft, after realizing that they weren't gonna go bankrupt after Kichikuo Rants, tried to make a sequel that would live up to it, but realized that they just couldn't do it. After six years and three project failures, they said, screw it, let's just make a game without caring about having a grand scale or scope, and that's where Rans 5D comes into the picture. It's incredibly short and nothing of note really happens. If I had to pick a favorite moment, uh, I enjoy Birdie trying so hard to get Rance to remember him, when Rance barely even acknowledges him. This all concludes with even the girl accompanying him, Kopadon, falling in love with Rance at the end, and I like Kopadon a lot, so that's cool. Okay, so from this point on, the rest of these are gonna have spoilers for each game, so I'm gonna start putting timestamps before each one, so you can skip to the next one. Starting, of course, with Rance 6, The Collapse of Zeth. This is where Rance finally starts to look like something that didn't come out 30 years ago. Rance 6 is a great game in its own right. While there are definitely many favorite moments to pick from, if I had to pick only one, it would easily be the time when Rance is captured by Camilla after Albert's betrayal. You see people one by one forced to entertain Camilla and her brethren or perish. The clown tries to juggle but out of fear drops one and is killed off. The nun sings praises of God, but is killed for worshipping someone other than Camilla. Finally, it's Rance's turn, and what does he do? With his life completely in her hands, he tries to bone her by convincing Camilla that he would be a damn good play, which somehow amuses her so much that after giving him a time limit to harden up, she lets him live another day. Like, wow! It's such a beautiful sequence of events. I think what really makes it is the final part we look so triumphant, with his hyper weapon standing proud. Probably the most Rance Rance has ever been. A representation of how his greatest skill is straight up his luck. Sengoku Rance Rance 7 is probably most people's first foray into this franchise, since it was actually the first game in the series to be translated by the now defunct Yandere translations way back when. I've got a whole introduction video to it if you're interested in checking it out in the top right corner. Sengoku Rance is a fantastic game in its own right, and probably ranks among my top 3 in the entire franchise as a whole. My favorite moment this time around would have to be Rance's friendship with Nobunaga. It's very rare for Rance to form an actual friendship with the male characters in the series, but somehow these two really hit it off. Then in a true ending, when Nobunaga has been taken over by Xavier, you see Rance showing an almost shocking level of compassion towards both Koihime, Nobunaga's little sister, and Nobunaga himself. Which is something you rarely ever see from Rance outside of his interactions with Syl. It's pretty heartwarming seeing his consideration towards her during the final battle, how he lets her finish the job, and how he comforts her without even swinging his hyper weapon. Rance Quest and Rance Quest Magnum. Rance 8 is a compilation of all the mini side stories that took place in Kichikuo Rance. His main job was to set up and close a lot of leftover plotlines for more minor characters, in preparation for Rance 9 and Rance 10. It's also a tough as nails game that will throw you into the dumpster if you aren't prepared. My favorite moment from this one would easily have to be the end of the main quest line for Rance Quest. The crux of Rance Quest's storyline is Rance is trying to find a cure for Syl, who has been encased in the Demon King's seal after the events of Sengoku Rance. At the ending, he finds out that even the world's greatest curse specialist, the Kalar Queen, can't remove the curse. And if she can't do it, nobody can. This ends with Rance emotionally breaking down for probably the first time in the entire series. He drowns himself with all the women he's met until he can't move anymore. You see Rance in a position he's almost never been in, entirely vulnerable. You also really get to see the extent of how much Rance cares about Syl, and how devastated he is when he realizes she has gone for good. Syl has always been Rance's moral compass in the series, and Kichiko Rance was the game that portrayed that the most. As that was retconned, this moment is probably the next best one. Rance 9, The Hellman Revolution God, I love listening to that Mama Toto remix! Rance 9 is of course the direct sequel to Rance Quest, but also the spiritual successor to a much older game by Alisoft called Mama Toto, which I also enjoyed. Rance 9 may not have my favorite gameplay in the series by a long shot, but the story and presentation of it is definitely the best the series has ever been up until now. 
The revolution of the Hellman Empire is incredibly exciting, full of twists and turns. Also, many of the CG and the scenes in the game are drawn absolutely beautifully. My favorite part for this one would have to be Miracle's Route, where you see her dimension hop between all these different worlds, but the one that sticks out to me the most is when she ends up fighting the self-defense force from Japan. Like, wait, what? Rance takes place in the same universe as modern Japan? What? Her ending was cute too, where Rance and Miracle get ripped out of time, and both of them come back as like 50 year old geezers. It's really funny to see this balding version of Rance, but more than that, there's a really great emotional moment where Miracle asks if Rance ever regrets all those years they spent together, and Rance just waves it off by saying of course not, and cracks a ton of jokes about him being a balding geezer. And finally we reach Rance X, the final battle. There is so much I could talk about, but let's just restrict this to my singular favorite moment. Look, I'm going to actually spoil something ridiculously huge here, so if you haven't played Rans 10, go ahead and skip past this. This is the only moment in this entire section which I consider to be a huge, huge spoiler. With that out of the way, there are a ton of great moments to talk about in Rans 10, both in part 1 and during the part 2 time skip. Like how you get to see all the old heroes from the previous generation mentor the new one, or the Toshin Toshi 3 reference complete with music and everything, partway to the ending. However, my favorite moment would have to be near the very very ending, where all of Rance's children have gathered in order to stop their dad, the new Demon King. My favorite moment is just seeing Rance interact with all his kids. As much as Rance spends the entirety of the series trying to avoid having children, using contraception magic for nearly all of it. In Rand's quest, you can see even amongst all his complaining, he does really dote on Riseto, his and Pastel's daughter throughout the game. In part 2, just watching him interact with all the children of all his favorite women, his relationship with Dark Rand, Riseto, L, and the rest is insanely heartwarming. Rance guessing who's the mother of each one and all those fun comments he makes, it's like, dang I knew it! Rance is a great dad! Watching him lead all his children into the final battle against all the previous Demon Kings Reborn, and that final line especially where he asks L, and consequently you the player, are you watching my greatness? Then keep on watching! I think that's the moment I finally realized that this 29 year long series which I have loved so much is going to end for good, and dang it did I not tear up when that hit me. And that finally wraps up everything I'd like to talk about Rants. Sure, I plan on doing probably individual videos on all the Rants remakes, and the ones I haven't gotten to yet, Rants 6, Rants 9, Rants 10, Kichikuo Rants. For now though, I feel pretty good about what I covered here. Feels like I got everything I want to say out of the way. I'd always planned on making a whole big Rants retrospective, but for now, I think this video covers most of my thoughts on the franchise as a whole. I already made the whole closing statement earlier before the favorite moments section, so instead I'll just mention again quickly, like, subscribe, notification, twitter, all that stuff as usual, but also, I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about rants for a real long time. As this is the last Z Memories, I'm gonna have a status update video up next, which will cover my closing thoughts on Z Memories and what's next for the channel afterwards, so please do check that out. I'm sure it will clarify any questions all of you might have for me, why I did Z Memories, whether I'm still doing these Japanese VN game hybrid things or visual novels in general, and what you can expect next. If you want to talk to me about rants for whatever reason, you know, that's what the comments section is for. Thanks for sticking around as always, linked on top is the entire Z Memories playlist in case you missed any, and on the bottom will be something interesting. See ya real soon!